there are a number of important things that separate AMD from Intel in the CPU market these days. Here are just a few. Product called Threadripper. Yeah. AMD yes, Intel no. Gigantic package. AMD yeah. yes, Intel no. Debuted at LTX. AMD yeah. yes, Intel no. But if the name and the sheer size and girth of AMD's new Socket TR4 platform isn't enough to sell you on it, then stick around because we're about to open it up and see if what's inside rips Team Blue a new one. The Be Quiet DarkBase Pro 900's modular design supports a variety of different layouts and configurations. Click on the link in the video description to learn more. Meet Threadripper, AMD's latest and greatest in more ways than one release for the Zen microarchitecture that threatens to hit Intel where it hurts the high-end desktop and workstation. This is a really big deal because the last time AMD had any punching power in this weight class, Opterons were still a thing people wanted to buy and you could still get a decent AGP graphics card. It can be argued that Ryzen 7, positioned against the Core i7-6900K, had a lot of appeal, but it lacked per-thread performance and, more importantly perhaps, the many PCI Express lanes that professionals have come to rely on. While Threadripper is actually clocked similarly to Ryzen 7 and makes use of the same modular CCX design and Infinity Fabric interconnect by amping it up to four CCXs across two dies, we now get a total of 64 PCI Express lanes. That is 20 more than Intel's shiny new Core i9 and even threatens Intel Xeon server processors, who currently enjoy just four more lanes than their Core i9 counterparts. And in a world where GPUs are critical to high-end compute performance like rendering and scientific research, 64 lanes gets you high-speed connections to a lot of them. Three GPUs by themselves at 16x speeds would saturate a Core i9 or Xeon completely, while on a Threadripper-based system, you're gonna have room to spare. To be fair to Intel, their rationale is that there's not many scenarios where this is a big issue. But AMD's betting, and we believe they're right, on NVMe storage, high-speed networking, and high-performance external accelerators, even GPUs, becoming more and more common as time goes on. Though with that said, there is no word yet on Thunderbolt support in any AMD ecosystem. What is supported on all AMD Zen-based platforms, though, are the usual suspects, like SenseMI, Precision Boost, and XFR, which allow Threadripper to determine the optimal performance state voltage and power limit on a millisecond scale and even boost performance further if the cooling is good enough. Old news perhaps, but it's an important distinction from Team Blue, whose high-end desktop and Xeon processors have traditionally lagged a generation behind their mainstream chips in terms of power management. Well, all right then, Linus, thanks for the recap. Tell us something we don't know. We'll get to that. First, a closer look at the chips launching today. The 1950X clocks in at a whopping 16 cores and 32 threads with a massive 40 megabytes of cache. It achieves this by <clears throat> gluing together two Zendai's of two CCX's each. What's perhaps even more interesting is its little brother, the 1920X, which still enjoys a numbers advantage over the more expensive Core i9-7900X at 12 cores, 24 threads, and still 64 PCIe lanes. So we slotted both of them, quite literally. This new mounting mechanism is bananas into an Asus Zenith Extreme with 32 gigs of Trident Z RGB RAM and a Thermaltake Ring RGB cooler. As for competition, all three of our other test benches will be represented, X299, Z270, and X370. And as for performance, well, 
Surprisingly, our 1950X actually beat out the competition in Rise of the Tomb Raider and Deus Ex Mankind Divided, but then fell well behind the pack along with the 1920X in CSGO. Not quite sure why that would be, but it pulls up alongside Team Blue again in our synthetics, so maybe we'll chalk it up to the ongoing game engine optimization for Ryzen that AMD's been shouting out, or just another source engine quirk to throw in the pile. Moving on to productivity benchmarks. This is where it gets really interesting. While our synthetics show Threadripper more or less trading blows with the Core i9, even in multi-threaded workloads, when we get into rendering with Cinebench R15 and Blender, our 12-core 1920X is competitive with the Core i9-7900X, and our 1950X is way out front, like by a lot. Our two Threadripper CPUs also had the lowest performance drop during our combined streaming and local recording test with OBS in CSGO. Beautiful. So what's the catch, Linus? Does it light up like a Roman candle? Do we need a pocket nuclear reactor to power it? Well, if you're overclocking, actually maybe. More on that to come. But at stock speed, Threadripper manages this kind of multi-threading performance at roughly a dozen more watts and 10 more degrees under synthetic load compared to the Core i9. And at these prices, the value proposition, especially for professionals, is outstanding. For gamers, unless you're streaming or 3D rendering at the same time you're gaming, Threadripper isn't gonna be the best value. But for pros, it's frankly starting to look like a no-brainer if your workload relies on multi-threading performance or lots of adding cards. Now it remains to be seen how Team Blue will react, if at all, but given their negative press against AMD's Epic and Threadripper products for data center and workstation use, it's safe to say they're beginning to feel a little hot under the collar. But that's okay, Intel. AMD's got a uh, Threadripper that can help you with that. Get it? It's a joke. Because you could rip the fabric. Whoa! Our buddies at CableMod bought an LTT integration. Business must be good. And for good reason. They're great people and they make great products. And they've got a new product to announce today. They're sleeving kits for AIOs. They let you add the same cable mod vibrant colors to your all-in-one liquid cooler that you previously could on your cables. And they are color matched, so your AIO tubing can actually match your mod mesh cables. Installation is super easy. You don't have to disassemble your cooler or anything like that. You just wrap mod wrap sleeving around your AIO tubing and complete the look with the included fastening clips. So check them out and maybe buy one, yeah, yeah, buy one at the link in the video description. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. Also linked in the description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join.